Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is my review for Girl Meets World, Season 1, Episode 9, Girl Meets 1961. And I was really looking forward to this episode because there were a lot of things I was really looking forward to. I thought this was going to be sort of like a filler, fun type of episode, but this episode really just really surprised me. This was probably the most surprising episode of Girl Meets World so far because... Boy Meets World tried to do these kind of episodes. You know, they did an episode on the 1950s, they did an episode on the 1930s. It really didn't work, in my opinion. It was not that funny. They were funny, but they were just funny. However, to this episode was absolutely fantastic. By far the best episode of the season so far. Just by far best episode so far. Loved everything about this episode. And one of the things that was so great about this episode was the acting, the cinematography, the directing of this episode. The um, writer Strawn directed this episode. You know, he plays Sean. He directed this, you know, he played uh, Sean in Boy Meets World. He directed this episode. Amazing job. Just wow. Such an amazing job from him. He did an amazing job in this episode. And I love the story of this episode. Really, one of the things this episode did so well was the acting of everyone, you know, of your four core characters, you know, Maya, Riley, Riley, Maya, Lucas, and uh, Farkle. Farkle's also, after this episode, is officially a main character, which I like, because Farkle's a great character. He really is. And um, let's talk about this episode. So basically, at the beginning of this episode, Corey is trying to teach the kids about the 60s, and they're bored out of their mind. They don't give a shit about the 60s. You know, they, they're just like, you know what, we don't really care, you know, you're really boring and everything. And honestly, it makes sense because when I'm in history class and I'm learning about stuff, currently in history class, we're learning about the beginning of the Americas. Like, no one really cares. It's like the 1600s. No one really cares right now. But, I and I mean, that was just a great way to start because that's how anyone would really react. Even though the 60s was such a great time, anyone in history class would react that way. Anyone, when they hear about the past, they're like, <laughs> That's how anyone would react, really. I mean, I would react probably the same way. I love the 60s, but still, like, you know, it really shows how bored people get, and I thought that was just such a funny way to start it, and, um... Corey tells them something that I thought was very interesting. He tells them how what they do, every single decision they make, is history. And he relates it to, you know, he asks them, what'd you do yesterday? And Riley explains, you know, what she did and everything. You know, her, like, um eating like an apple or something like that and uh, he said that's history and he wants them to make this project where they will research their ancestors in the 1960s and do a report on it you know kind of talk about it to the class basically get them more invested in it so from here we follow their ancestors and this was amazingly done in my opinion the cinematography in the 1960s part of this episode was just fantastic especially for a disney show i would not expect much from a disney show you wouldn't i would not expect much from a disney show disney shows usually when they do this kind of stuff when they do flashbacks and then to like early it's really like half-assed it's really just they make fun of it this was in no way making fun of it if anything this was a love letter to the 60s it really was and we get a really good story here i loved the flashbacks in this episode i love the way they were done and just wow probably the best part of the episode were the 1960 flashbacks they were not something i was expecting to be as good as they were i was expecting it to be like boy meets world where you can't take it that seriously this you can take seriously and i really liked it so let's talk about the story we follow around um, Riley's ancestor, Rosie. Rosie was a girl who was just coming to, um, you know, she is sort of like a world, tra world traveler sort of girl. She's very invested in, like, journalism and things like that. Very much loves to do that kind of stuff. And um, she's just now moving to, I believe, um, I believe she's moving to... She's, I don't remember where she's moving to, but she's start, She's trying to get with the program, like, with the culture of the 1960s, and, um, she ends up meeting Ginsburg, who, Corey Fogelmantis, wow, this was, uh, just by far his best acting out of any episode we've seen. He did such a great job as Ginsburg, like, he had the voice down so well, 
I love the fact that he was parroting, like, hippies, and it was so funny to watch. Like, that was hilarious, the way he... And I loved that he just kept saying man over and over again. He's like, yeah, man, you got this, man. He had that kind of voice like that. I thought that was just hilarious, the way he did it. Like, his acting there was so, so good. Rosie, you know, her acting didn't require that much. It was basically Riley, but in the 1960s. But Ginsburg, I thought, you know, was a very good character. I really enjoyed his character. However, the main character we focused around is May. May is Maya's, um, May is Maya's, um, ancestor in the 1960s, um, Maya's great-grandmother, and, um, May is a girl that is a very interesting character. Now, we're gonna talk about why in a second, but Rosie and May end up meeting. May is a hippie. She is a hippie on the run. She is, um, planning on going to California, and it seems like the two of them are gonna be very good friends, you know, um, she's a very... A uh, gifted musician, May. You know she's a very gifted musician, and you see the friendship between the two of them. And then, um, you know, you kind of see things escalate from there. And then we find out we go back to the present, and I like the way this was done too. I like that it wasn't just in the past or just in the present. It flipped around, and I really like that because if the whole episode would have been the past, I don't think it would be as interesting as the episode really was. And we see Maya get really upset, you know, they're talking about their ancestors, and Maya's just like, I don't care what happened to my, you know, grandmother, I don't care what happens, and, um, there's, like, this book that they, that she has of her, and she ends up closing it, and we find out why she is so upset. Basically, the reason why Maya is so upset is because she is ashamed of her grandmother, because... May gets up to perform, you know, for this song and everything, and I was so happy that they allowed Sabrina Carpenter to sing. This is not a show that requires her to sing, but she really, when she can, she is one of the few Disney stars that actually really can sing very well, and I gotta say, she is really just a fantastic singer, I gotta say. She really is a fantastic singer. I love her music. I have her uh, EP called Can't Blame a Girl for Trying. Really good, um, really good EP. I would, I would recommend you guys get it. It's not your typical Disney music at all, really. It's not. Um, it's very contemporary. It's very more, like, indie. Sabrina Carpenter is really into that kind of style of music, so I really like that about her, definitely, that she doesn't try to be all, like, oh, bubblegum pop sort of music. She doesn't really do that. Her music's more, like, indie sort of. And, um, I love the song that May sang. Thought that was a great song. Love that we got a chance to hear her sing. Thought that was fantastic, and I love the way that was done. So, basically, you know, we find out what happens, um, after this, and then we meet, um, Merlin Scroff. Merlin Scroff is Lucas's, um, is, uh, Lucas's great-grandfather, I believe, and, um, that was hilarious to watch. I loved finding out about Merlin Scroff, and, you know, he tells, um, everyone about it, and, of course, Maya is, uh, makes fun of him, obviously, because that's just what Maya does. She likes to make fun of people, and she likes to make fun of him, of course, and I just thought that was really funny to watch. I really liked his character, and the way that they put all four of these characters together was really cool, in my opinion, as well, and I really like that. So we go back into the past. We see Merlin Scroff perform and everything. Him and Rosie have this, like, instant connection. Definitely have this instant connection, you know, um... You can tell that they like each other, and I like that about, um, I like that about this part, I like that, but the saddest part about all this is May and Rosie, they're getting off to a good start, and, um, you know, they're talking and everything. Rosie is writing down, um, some stuff that she learned about, uh, you know, she's writing some stuff that happened in the 1960s, and May says, oh, I'll be back, she never returns. She never returns, and that is why Maya isn't really, doesn't really care so much about May, and we find out that to this day, people still do not know where May is, you know, she just disappeared, basically, and, um, we then go to the history class, and it's really sad, it, it's actually a very dark scene, because we find out that basically almost all these characters went through bad choices, Merlin Scroff, um, wanted to be a very successful singer, but he only had one hit single, which was the song we hear him sing, um, I gotta say, the guy that plays, um, the guy that plays, uh, Lucas, I don't know what his name is, but really good singing voice from him, he did a, he has a really great singing voice as well, I gotta say, he was fantastic, um, but he, unfortunately, went down the wrong path, probably drugs and things like that, Disney obviously can't say that, though, um, he probably got into, like, drugs and things like that, and he went to prison because of that, so, yeah, I thought that was interesting, and, um, Rosie continued to be a journalist, successful journalist and everything, and, um, Ro you know, Riley kind of convinces Maya that May was important, May did mean something, and, uh, in many ways, May is like Maya, 
you know, Maya is very, you know, much doesn't like to, you know, has many problems going on, but doesn't really want to do anything about them. She is very much like, um, you know, Riley and Maya are very much like Rosie and May, and I like the connections between them. I thought that was really cool as well. Um, I really like that. And uh, probably the funniest part of uh, this episode was when we see, um, you know, probably the funniest part here is when we see Maya take um, Lucas, take this guitar, and she starts to, like, sing a song about Lucas. She's like, Ranger, you know, Ranger Roy. I thought that was hilarious to watch. Love that scene. Great stuff there. And um, then we get a really great thing from, you know, we also find out from Riley that... Um, Rosie is her great um is her great grandmother. She gave birth to um Topanga's mother and her mother, you know, had um Topanga's mother had um Topanga, of course, and I thought that was really cool to watch and uh definitely really enjoyed that as well. And then we get a very touching scene. We see um Maya go back to um the bakery which is probably going to be a place where you see them at a lot. I guess they were trying to make this like a Chubby sort of thing, because if you remember in Boy Meets World, Chubby's was the place to go, and Girl Meets World, the bakery is the place to go, and I like that. I like that they're trying to make that like a Chubby's thing, and I like that. So Maya left that book there, and she decides to um, get it back, and opens up the page, and it says, Maya's artwork here um, from Riley, and I thought that was so sweet, because it's basically like Maya is going to continue the journey of May, doing what May never did. You know, Maya's going to continue that. She's not going to be like May, and I really like that, definitely. I thought that was really well done. And then probably the most surprising moment of the episode was with Topanga. Um, Riley talks to Topanga, and we find out what Topanga's name actually means, and I thought this was so good, because they never actually said what Topanga is. Topanga's not a common name. I, there's no girl, I don't think there's any other girl named Topanga. I really don't. We find out that the reason her name is Topanga is because it means sheer beauty and just, you know, her mother wanted a child that have pure beauty and that's what Topanga is. She is beautiful and I thought that was just such a great scene when Riley talks to Topanga. Just great scene. Love that. Also, no Augie in this episode, which is kind of a bummer, but he did not need to be in this episode. And uh, I love that scene. Thought that was fantastic. Um, so... We then go back to, you know, history class, and um, Farkle is presenting about what they learned, and we see a very good scene where we see all of the 1960, the real, these weren't real people, but, like, what they actually looked like compared to uh, Maya, Maya, Riley, Farkle, and Lucas. I thought that was really well done, the way they did that scene, just really like that. And, um, you know, Corey's all like, hey, isn't a history class so fun now? I thought that was so funny, the way that was done. Really loved that, that. and um, the very end of the episode, we get a scene very reminiscent of Boy Meets World. This really reminded me of Boy Meets World, in my opinion. Um, we see Maya, Riley, Lucas, and Farkle, they're still in class. You know, he says, why are you here so early? And they say, what are we going to learn next? And Corey says that whatever they learn next is history. Thought that was just such a great way to close the episode. And um, I actually don't know what happened after that, because my DVR cut off, so I don't know what happened after that. But this episode was just, oh my god beautiful, beautiful episode. I was not expecting this episode to be as dramatic and beautiful as it was. It was just probably the most emotional episode of Boy Meets World so far. Uh, Boy Meets World. <laughs> Girl Meets World so far. Such an emotional episode. Ryder Strong did an amazing job directing this episode. Just, wow, he did such a great job. I love this episode. By far best episode of the season. And then, you know, one of the things I said that made this episode so good was the acting. The way that, you know, um, all of them had to play dual roles, all of them had to play a different character, was very well done because we got some very different kinds of acting from them. Especially Corey uh, Foggle Mantis. He really stepped it up in this episode. I gotta say, these past two episodes, he's really stepped it up. Especially this episode. Him playing um, Ginsburg was hilarious and probably the best acting we've seen from him because he was so different. Ginsburg was so different from Farkle. It was just so fun to watch. Um... Maya as May was fantastic. Uh, I mean, Sabrina Carpenter as May was fantastic. Um, you know, I, I can't remember the guy that plays Lucas, but he played Merlin. He was great as well. And, of course, um, Ro Rowan Blanchard was fantastic as Rosie. So I thought everyone was really, really good there. Everyone was fantastic, and I really loved that about their acting. thought that was really great, too. And, yeah, so this episode was absolutely fantastic. I loved it, and I really loved the episode really focused on Maya kind of continuing the tradition of what May couldn't complete. And I really like that, the message of 
make your own history. You know, your life is history. Really, think about it. If you think about things that happened in your life, they're in the past. They're history. They're things that have happened in the past to you, and they're not really something that you remember as much. And that's really what this episode is trying to convey, the idea of this is history. This is something that happened to you a while ago, but it is something that will stick with you, and it's history. I love that message, and I thought that was just such a fantastic message, and I love the way that was conveyed, and just a fan, fan, fantastic episode. Loved it. Just by far best episode of the season. Absolutely loved everything about this episode. Just, and again, this episode was meticulously directed, beautiful cinematography. I loved the, like, black and white sort of, not really black and white, but it was a darker cinematography than it was when it was the present, and I thought that was really well done as well. So let me know what you guys saw this episode. Probably, again, a very, uh, definitely very dark for Disney Channel. I gotta say, Girl Meets World, that's one of the things I love about Girl Meets World is how dark they're actually getting for Disney Channel. Really sweet episode, really loved it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode, and in my opinion... This is the best Boy Meets World and Girl Meets World has done of those sort of, like, um, back-in-time episodes. The 50s one that, Girl Me that Boy Meets World did never really work. The one in the 30s was funnier, but still just okay. This one worked amazingly well, and I love the way that it was done. And I'll see you guys in my next video. That's in my review. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be in my review for tonight's episode of The Nick. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.